Okay, are you going to go and do your little pre-planned bit? I didn't have a pre-planned bit. My natural banter was just so great, and you wasted it on the test sounds. Your natural banter. This is your natural banter? M no, mine. because here's the thing. I'm going to say what I said before. This, this is going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be very natural and great and great for the listeners. Or, or you're going to be on they're going to experience what we are like all of the time, which is where the two of us violently insult each other until inevitably one of us gets insulted and then it ends. All right. Nice the, set air. All right. The voice that you hear is the fiance. Um, would you want to be the fiance or do you want me to call your real name? I'm the fiance. The fiance. All right. So, um, Dan's on, Dan's on vacation this week. He's in Montana. Um, he actually said he's not coming back and he might be dead. Thank God. So, um, he, uh, he fought a grizzly bear. He fell into a geyser and I think he drowned in a lake. So, um, rest in peace, Dan. This is his memorial show. In his place, um, as you may have figured out, is the fiance who... Um, it's gonna help me. This uh, this isn't an official. You watch, I w listen. I think it's just kind of a one of our side projects. So um, I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction of being the co-host. I don't even want the satisfaction of being a project. You're lucky that I'm here. Okay. Well, you it know is 11:24 at night. I am very tired. Okay. Do you want me to unplug your microphone? Fuck you. Don't do that. Okay. Anyway, um, so the reason why we're doing this is to give you guys some content. Um, we're not putting out an official show this week, but we didn't want to just leave you guys um, high and dry. So so I, we're going to give you some C- minus content. We're going to give you some very, very poor content. So um, first things first, how's your back? My back fucking blows. So for all of the listeners out there, I have back spasms because I am 29 going on 89, apparently. And uh, I threw my back out this week. And... Ralph is really loving it because he has to weigh on me hand and foot. She's been an absolute delight. It has been. Oh, I've great. been a terror. But you want to know what I've gotten him to do? This man has watched hours of Bravo with me this week. I have. Hours. Ralph, who's your least favorite housewife? Vicky. And what? Uh, which of the franchises is Vicky on? Vicky is on The Real Housewives of Orange County. Vicky has a large gap between her nose and upper lip, which you could park a jetliner on. She's disgusting. She looks like Troopy Dog. <laughs> I hate her. What did I say? I said I is, she looks like someone I want to get a U I want her to get a UTI. <laughs> I hate her. This would usually be the point in the conversation where I scold Ralph on how he doesn't need to constantly comment on women's physical appearances and there's more to insult them on. But any of you listening, which is none of you who watch Bravo know that Vicky is the fucking worst and she deserves everything that we're Ralph getting, just said about We're getting her. a female perspective this week, a little a little bit for the Oh my god. RIP to your listeners. Uh, we don't what, all three? What Alan's gonna tune out? Bye bye, Alan. Okay. So um just so we uh kind of can get a head start on next week, we actually watched one of the two movies Dan recommended last week. He recommended just as a recap, The Road and Annihilation. And Fiance, which one did we watch? We watched Annihilation, which I found out tonight has two ends in it. It does. She was asking me how to Google it, and I said it's two ends, and she went, No! It has one! And then I Googled it, and it had two, and she went, Ugh. Listen, autocorrect is ruining our nation. What do you want? I think it's just ruining your nation. Oh, go fuck yourself. Okay, so, um... First things first, um, do you want to start or do you want me to start? I want you to start because you're the guest this week. Okay. Well, I have a great way to start. So this is how the night went. Originally, Ralph wanted to report the, to record this podcast with, you know, no precursor, no format. And I'm a planner and I wasn't getting into that. So I said, we're going to watch Annihilation. I'm going to write down my notes. You write down your notes. We'll compare. We're going to be professionals about this. So before the movie even starts, I go to get off of the couch. And we have a bum couch. One of the legs is broken. And if you slide to a I don't think you're providing enough backstory. Off of the couch. Fuck you. The couch leg will give out and you have a three-legged couch now earlier today i yelled at ralph 
for how he aggressively sits on the couch because Ralph does not sit on the couch. Ralph harpoons onto a couch. Well, joke's on me because we go to start the movie. I get up and the fucking couch falls apart. So we had to pause the movie to put the couch back together. So that's how this whole thing started. She actually slipped and cracked her skull open. It was great. I wish. I wish too. Uh, So Ralph has a very hard time not giving me his opinions when we're watching movies, TV shows, listening to an album, anything. Uh, I am just the free board for all of his opinions. And before the movie started, I said, we're not going to say anything to each other throughout the movie. I want our reactions to be pure and unadulterated going into this podcast. Well, I have it to the second. At three minutes and 28 seconds in, Ralph gave me his first opinion. What was my first opinion? I don't know. All I wrote <laughs> down was that Ralph has a hard time not giving me his opinion, which is a metaphor for my life. Okay, so <laughs> I think what your definition of an opinion is me making like a passing comment like, why wouldn't she have closed the door or something like that? That's not an opinion. Because it's annoying. It takes me out of the moment okay, when you're giving me your input. Okay, well, that's great because you sat there completely silent and didn't give me your opinion at Only all. Only three times. I counted. I have a tally sheet. That's great. You have a tally sheet, but you don't have examples of each. Okay, let me just start you off. What did you think of Annihilation? I have a lot of feelings about Annihilation. Before I give my opinion... (laughs) That was a long pause. Oh, go fuck yourself. Before I give my opinion, what do you think my opinion's going to be? So, I'm going to think you were interested in it because, and rightfully so, that it was a female cast... Um, I think you thought that was... I don't think you were, like, one of those... Because you're not one of those people who, uh, you know, pounds a chest going, like, you know, feminism, feminism. But I think you also are in How sexist of him, right? Yeah. Okay, you know what? Fuck you. No, keep giving me my opinion. And I thought you went in there kind of wanting to like it. Um, I think what I've learned is that you're not a Natalie Portman fan, so I think that worked against I it. I am a Natalie Portman fan. Oh, I'm not allowed to be a Natalie Portman fan. All I Portman said fan. was that she constantly looks confused. Which is true. It is true. She looks confused a lot. Um, Good job. So, and I think that you didn't like the movie. Just from your body language. So, I was really rooting for this movie. And not because I'm a woman. And it a was women? starring women. <laughs> You're a woman. I'm a woman. Stop assuming that I'm one individual. <laughs> what did you think of Annihilation for the fifth fucking I time? I wanted to like it. As a woman, not even as a woman. I wanted to like it. I like science fiction. <laughs> That's so sexist of him. <laughs> but as a woman, my feelings are. No, I actually, I'll get to it later when we get more in depth. Get I actually to had it a now. lot of problems with how it was treated as far as like being a female empowerment film. Because I think it failed on a lot of avenues. But aside from all of like the failing of feminist plot line which i don't even know if it was going for it failed as a site as a sci-fi plot line to me there were just a lot of holes there was a lot of uninteresting things and my biggest flaw with it was that there was zero character development and at the end of the day i did not care about any of these characters none of them had any plot line that was like pulling at my heartstrings making me want to follow this story you didn't like that um, the one was an addict, but they give no follow-up to it at all? I literally wrote... I, so here's... So back to what I was saying about, you know, it tried to be this, like, oh, look, it's, like, these very smart females going to solve this, like, scientific mystery. But then they gave them all these, like, ridiculous tropes. Literally, it was one scene where she goes, oh, this female lost her child, and this female is a lesbian and is sober, and this female is dying of cancer, and this female lost her husband. I mean, it was just, like, so marginalized and so ridiculous that, like, they were trying so hard to be feminist that, like, it... It was not at all. So I like how you said there's no character development and then there's strong character development. But that was in one scene. I get You know what? I'm going to be honest. I do understand what you're saying. And It I, was three lines of dialogue that was explained I do. I do actually understand what you are saying. Um, I'm going to be honest. That didn't bother me that much. Um, I think the movie's a sci-fi movie. And sci-fi movies tend to have very little character development. Because the main idea of the movie is a science fiction. So can I disagree with you for one moment, as I typically do? 
Um, I look at a movie like the modern day adaptation of Star Trek. Okay, now you might argue it's not that big of a sci-fi movie. I think it totally is. It's a different kind of sci-fi movie. Star Trek has a lot of character development. The original Alien has a lot of character development. This, to me, you were presented these four main characters that you had to follow a story arc through, and you were given their backstory in literally three lines of dialogue. Three lines of dialogue. That's not enough for me. There was no flashback. There was no, this is what the kid's name was. This is what kind of cancer she's dying from. I mean, you didn't even know what kind of cancer she had. That's not enough for me. Well, to be fair, um, specifically, and you are you're right. Actually, I don't disagree with you. The cancer thing wasn't revealed in that scene. It was revealed during the interrogation near the end of the movie. That's and fair. they didn't open up. She didn't say, I'm dying of cancer. It was something that Natalie Portman just kind of assumed given her behavior. Um, Can I tell you something that I wrote down about the sure. girl who has cancer? So this is, is earlier on. I hated her. <laughs> okay, great. Because you want to know what I wrote down? So this was before the character's name was revealed. Very early on in the film. I wrote down, and I quote, The pensive blonde asshole is me. Especially with the way she picks at her nails and stares off into the distance as she speaks. Yeah. Maybe that's why I hated her so <laughs> that's much. That's why you hated her so much. So Welcome I, to the rest of your life. I think it's interesting that you mentioned Alien because I actually felt that it had a lot of Alien it qualities. Did. Which it did. may or may not have been intentional. I think Alien's such a benchmark movie that I think every sci-fi movie is going to be derivative of it, derivative of it in some way, or shape, or form, whether it's intentional or not. And I think it's interesting that you have a strong female protagonist in this kind of suicide min, uh, mission against an unknown enemy that really doesn't have any um, like sentience. It's not intelligent at all. So I did think that was interesting. Um, my feelings on the movie actually. I felt that each act of the movie was better than the last. The first third of the movie, I couldn't stand. I hated it. I thought the pace was off. I thought the flashbacks between her and um, uh, Poe, whatever his name is, Oscar Isaac, I think his He's name is. just Poe. I, I didn't, there was no chemistry between them. I didn't care about it. I found it jarring and it took momentum out of the movie where here they are walking into kind of this glorious, you know, sci-fi mystical farce and then there's her, you know, and him like, having like a pillow fight or something like that. I thought that was annoying. Second half of the movie was very slow, but I felt in a good way that they it was built up the tension really well. It had a really strong kind of creepy pace, and that's actually when I started getting into the movie. At that point, that's when I said, okay, they may be moving to something. And then the final um, third of the movie, when it just went full-blown sci-fi, I actually loved that. I did not see that coming. You know, we always talk about how I predict endings in movies. I did not see this one coming at all. Um, I actually had two predictions. One came right, one was wrong. Um, first one, when she found the dead body um, in Can the I lighthouse. Can I just say for the record, I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. The hour, the movie is an hour and 55 minutes. It is a thing. Ralph likes to predict movies. I didn't do it this I, time. No, you did. I wrote it down. At exactly... One hour into the film, Ralph said to me, I have a prediction. And as I always do, I said, I don't want to know. Keep it to yourself. And I didn't. And you did. Okay. Very good at that. So I'll tell you the prediction. I thought Jane the Virgin was going to go crazy, which I was right about, but I thought she was going to shoot herself, which I was wrong about. I thought we she... We should also preface that Jane the Virgin... <laughs> It's not a character in the movie. I think people who listen to the show realize that I never use the names of the characters. I use the names. I also of... think that no one who listens to your show watches the Jane the Virgin. Jane the Virgin's good. It is a CW show. That, movie, that show stinks. I watched it for two seasons and I got bored of it. Rob I usually, it the whole time. I will usually ride along on a show with you. And that one, I was like, it's a tough. J Here's what all I have to say for Jane the Virgin. Ralph has watched pretty much every Real Housewives franchise with me, but he has not watched Jane the Virgin in full with me. So it, it, what, it was bad. Make your own judgments, people. <laughs> so um, I thought Jane the Virgin was going to kill herself. I thought she was going to lose her mind and she was going to shoot herself. And she didn't. There was no allusion to it. She mm. did lose her mind, but I think it kind of... 
I don't know if she lost her mind as much as she was looking out for herself. I think she had a delusion. I think that she, rightfully so, she had a logical explanation for what was going on mm-hmm. in a very illogical situation to begin with. Um, it just wasn't actually what was going on. She actually, as much as I couldn't stand her, I thought she was the best character, though, because she actually was, you could see her becoming more unraveled as it went, where um, Westworld Girl, which again, I don't know her name, where Westworld also was unraveling, but you didn't really see it, so. Well, Westworld Girl was like that trope of like the weak unraveling, Mm -hmm. you know, like the woman who like can't handle it, and then the Jane the Virgin Girl, I love how we're really using proper What was her name in the movie? I don't fucking know. She was Jane the Virgin. I know her name in real life. Uh, Jane. No, I don't. Jane the Virgin. Uh, she was in some movie with The Rock. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's called Annihilation. She, <laughs> she unraveled in this, as, as odd as it sounds, she unraveled in this logical way because once she realized what the connection that Natalie Portman had to her husband, once she realized, that, like, oh, Natalie Portman was married to this man mm-hmm. who, like, opened up this other person with the weird worms crawling inside of them. She was like, oh, this bitch is going to kill all of us, too. Yeah, I, I right with you with that. And um, the the thing I did predict that did come true is so that, you know, the scene where they first go to the light, lighthouse and she sees the body there and it's kind of like almost in a meditative state. Mm-hmm. I was saying that's going to be an allusion to like Buddha or something like that. So, do you know the famous Rage Against the Machine album cover where the monk's setting himself on fire? For once, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, about yeah. Um, so, when he put the gr- grenade, I think that was actually a deliberate um, allusion to that. That it was some guy self-sacrificing himself in a very Buddhist kind of way. I think I was right on that one. Cause so, he you literally know what's interesting is that... And maybe this is me looking for connections as like, whatever, you look for connections for what you know. So when they first showed that, I actually thought the way he was sitting, I thought that it was a woman holding a baby. Oh. And I got very, I got annoyed because there were already these tropes throughout the movie of like, oh, this woman lost her child and this woman's an addict and this woman lost her husband, yada, yada, yada. I was like, really? They're going to play it that now? (laughs) That like someone like fucking blew themselves up with their baby in their arms? I don't want to see that. I hope they don't show that. Not interested. Stop playing at like shit that's only going to get to me. This is stupid. And I'm glad to say that I was 100% wrong and I was overreacting because that is not what that was representing. (laughs) But... I did think that at first, and I was, like, very disturbed by it. I was actually ready to be like, I hate this. I don't want to see a woman and her baby get blown up. I overreacted. I was very wrong. So, actually, I want to go back to something you said before where you said they're playing to, you know, like, kind of female tropes and that, you know, you have the attic, you have the lesbian and all that. If you, because actually, on the other side, I actually thought it was a great movie I think when you're in this era and you have movies with an all-female cast, obviously they're polarizing. Ghostbusters, for example, mm-hmm. um, which I I was annoyed at. I think you're just doing this to play to a demographic. I don't think this is real. Where I think a movie like this actually came across very genuine. I think there was a reason why they sent an all-female cast in. to Because you've sent male, male um, soldiers in. Mm-hmm. You're getting no results at it. Now we're bringing academics in. Something on the other side of the spectrum. And I don't think the female empowerment thing was very heavy-handed. I think that's actually how women probably would react in that situation. I could be wrong. I'm a man. But I did think it was... So I don't I don't fully disagree with you, and that's why I don't fully hate this it movie. It didn't take me out of the movie. This, I, so, I thought it would. But let me tell you, as a woman, it did. So I really wanted to love this movie. I did not want to shit on it. I really wanted to love it. And I get that overall they were going for this, like, listen, this group of men went in, they failed, so we're going to send in this group of females. Great, cool, love it, they're all scientists. Aside from their tragic tropes, they all have a reason to be there. They all bring a different kind of intelligence into the project. Love it. But there were also these moments that were so annoying to me. Like, for example, in the movie, Jane the Virgin is a lesbian. And 
about a, a quarter way through the movie when Natalie Portman's introduced to her, she hits on her. And the other woman goes, oh, geez, like, could you not hit on her for one moment? I, I'm like, actually- and, and that, to me, is a double standard because if it was a male character in that situation, it would be like, oh, really? We're putting this dude in the movie and he's the one dude, so he's going to hit on all these chicks? To me, it was offensive to lesbians because I know a lot of lesbians and it's it's not like every girl who's a lesbian and sees another girl is attracted to them the same way that a heterosexual male is not attracted what to... What is lupus? <laughs> this is completely inside or has nothing of, to do with what we're talking about. There's a commercial about. on the television and while I'm making a point, he has to interrupt me because he's freaking what toxic is masculinity. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying, to me, it was very tropic and very 1998 to have the lesbian hit on Natalie Portman because that's not that's not representative of lesbians because the one chick said, oh, could one girl come in here that you don't hit on? That's unfair because I know a lot of lesbians who are not attracted to every female the same way straight men are not attracted to every female. It felt very shoehorned to it say that she was a so lesbian. It was so lame. And it had it nothing to do with the so movie. It was so old school. It had nothing to do with Her the movie. Her being a lesbian it had nothing. nothing. It never came back up again, too. That's the thing. Maybe I could understand it if throughout the movie she had this, like, growing love for Natalie Portman and they fell in love or some shit or she had this like unrequited love towards her but it never came up again so it again was just a really stereotypical trope that added nothing to the plot that was unnecessary and was offensive to a group of people I'm 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 with you. I that's that's when that was the scene where I thought I can't I'm going to wait for the movie. tweets about how Ralph's fiance is an SJW so excited for it. Well, I don't even know if you're an SJW. It is. I'm a conf- normal person who respects other people and their feelings, but in today's climate, that's like not cool. Um, I'll tell you what my favorite, the thing that I thought the movie did the best with, I thought it was a real science fiction movie. I think a lot of science fiction movies have fallen into the Star Wars, Star Trek, mm-hmm. that the science fiction is just a setting for an action movie, which is great, but you don't. it doesn't really make you think. This movie, I think, falls into that hard science fiction where it doesn't really give you all the answers. Yep. You're left wondering. You don't really fully understand everything. There's a lot of symbolism in it, and I really, really liked it, especially the scene with the... Um, the flowers becoming the people and they're yes, explaining cool. how the prism is mm-hmm. actually kind of um, like uh, splitting the DNA and yes. meshing it together. That's when the movie, that's when I was all in with the movie where I'm well, like, it was okay. One of the few, to me, it was one of the few scientific movies that really viewed human beings as scientific objects. Yeah. Um, there was one particular dialogue with, I'm sorry, I don't remember anyone's name in this movie, but the chick who was dying of cancer, she goes on this monologue about, is there, Dr. there's a difference between, Killjoy. Su- yeah, Killjoy. There's a difference between, is there really a difference between suicide and self-destruction and that all humans self-destruct and rarely do humans actually commit suicide and i just thought it was cool because it was about viewing humans as scientific things that break down which is kind of connected to how they all had the things that was killing them yes former addict the Mm -hmm. cutter um the one woman's carrying the guilt of her daughter i thought I actually hated that scene, and I'll tell you why. It suffers from Westworld syndrome, where every line they're it's shooting a for thing. a home run. Yeah. They're always gazing into the distance or saying something poignant. I actually singled that one out as my least favorite line. Which in the makes movie. sense because that's how, for the listeners at home, loves oh the fiance. <laughs> edit that out. I'm the only one that ever holds to the it. The fiance loves, and I even wrote it down. I said right after it, I said, I do like the suicide versus self-destruction monologue in parentheses because I'm an emo bitch. <laughs> um, I I love grandiose, ridiculous, over-the-top monologues. Ralph does not like that. You he pepper likes them to show, in. And, and respectfully so. He likes to show in a movie to show the story and not so much tell it i am much more am a fan of telling the story real dialogue i want people to talk how people really would talk and all due respect 
All due respect. Um, I, you know what I really liked? So science fiction movies in this kind of horror fiction, I guess this alien derivative, they almost always take place in like one or two or three places. It's always either, you know, um, like a post-apocalyptic city, a abandoned starship, always these dark, depressing areas. And the fact that it took place in this really bright, thriving place full of life, granted mutated life, I thought that was one of the best things that the movie did where it set it was in a setting that you really didn't expect. And I thought that really was that's what pulled me in the most, saying, I've never seen this before. A horror movie in like the daytime with aliens and um, mutants and all that. I really thought that that was a creative twist on what could have been a very boring, run-of-the-mill setting. I thought so, too. I really liked that as well. And I actually got a lot of Stranger Things vibes from it so in that much. way. Where, like, you watch Stranger Things and, you know, it's these kids pedaling on their bicycles. And then, like, aliens are involved and this kid's, like, abducted basically by an alien. And... It's a different kind of setting. I really liked it. I also really loved that as soon as you were immersed into the world, which I refer to in the movie, it's called The Shimmer. I called it a Lisa Frank folder. <laughs> it did look like a Lisa. It literally just looked like a Lisa Frank folder. I actually expected a dolphin to even, go like flying Even like the, when, those, when that like deer with like the flower antlers that had like a copy of it attached to it, I was like, this is a Lisa Frank folder. This is nuts. Um, it was very pretty. It was not scary. There was there was that, f and that's one thing the movie did a good job of was that you were visually looking at it and visually it was stunning and it was very beautiful. They didn't do but any trick. You trip. had, you still had that unsettled feeling of like this is too good to be true. And obviously, you know, going into the film, I mean, it's fucking called annihilation. I don't think it's going to be a fucking happy ending for all of us here. But I did appreciate the juxtaposition of a beautiful landscape with a scary underlying plot behind it. You know what I also thought was interesting is that you're not wondering if the alien or whatever it is. One, you don't really know, even at the end of the movie, what it is. You understand that it's alien in nature as that it's not from Earth. But you don't know if it's just a natural biological thing, if it's another alien race, if it's a higher form of consciousness. They really never bring that um, uh, to uh, – they never give you a conclusion of that. And I walked away thinking that this is just the next step of what humans become. This is evolution. It's not an enemy. It's not a positive thing. It's just this is what happens, that – Evolution reaches a point and then some alien outside force comes and completely corrupts it. And now this is the new norm. And then that goes on for a while and then there's something else and something else. It really, I walked away with a lot more questions, but in a good way. And all the scares you get out of it are, they earn them. They're not cheap mm -hmm. scares. Absolutely. What was your favorite scene in the movie? Because I think you and I are going to agree on this. Or disagree. <laughs> Which I guess would be the only two options. Oh, I don't know. I thought the scene with the bear with the dead girls was one of the creepiest. <laughs> okay, so I here's love that what scene. I thought about it. So there's this scene where like this chick has like disappeared, and this like I didn't know it was a fucking bear. I, to <laughs> me, it looked like a boar bear yeah, I don't... combo. It was like a mutant. It was actually which is more... basically the premise of the Shimmer is that everything is a mutant inside of the. It was shimmer. like a skull bear. Well, yeah, because that's the premise of the Shimmer. It's that it's a mutated DNA. Um, but so this thing shows up and it like has the chick's voice, but it's this like scary thing. And had I not had this prior thing going into it, I probably would have had it as my favorite scene. But all I could think, and I actually wrote it down, was Dan fucking loves movies where animals speak as humans. Because <laughs> another movie that he recommended that I loved was The Witch. But one of the scenes in The Witch that the landlord and ears were petrified of was the scene Does where Does Val like to live deliciously? Was the scene where like <laughs> the goat starts talking and is like, Does thou wants to live deliciously? And like ears and the landlord told like, me You sound like the tree friend. I am the tree and I sound like this. 
Shout just, out to our Twin Peaks spo- fans. Spoiler, um, the fiance and I love Twin Peaks, and we are probably are going to, if we do this again, Ralph, who in, is the bigger Twin Peaks fan? You are the fiance. You're the bigger Twin Peaks I fan. I am. I'm a fucking nerd okay but so anyway back, i'm not allowed to I, like I, it back to the original story so ears and layla were petrified of this thing and i saw it and ralph and i were watching because dan recommended it and i started cracking up i mean i was sitting on the couch laughing my ass off slapping my knee like i thought it was so funny so then when it happened in this movie i i just looked at ralph and i was like dan fucking loves hu- animals that talk like humans you know why because he is one. <laughs> Dan sucks. Okay. Oh. All right. So. But Ralph sucks more. Um, Can oh. I tell you my least favorite scene? Okay. Um, I really, really, really hated the scene where she was, Natalie Portman was cheating on her husband. Me too. With the married guy. And he goes into this fucking monologue about how, like, it's basically scientific for them to be cheating on their spouses because they have this physical attraction. He's like, oh, I still love my wife. Because, and like, I just thought it was shitty. It was just like, really? It had, it also had like, nothing no, to do no with the one, movie. It had nothing to do with the movie. I still don't understand how her cheating on her husband had anything to do with the movie and how him cheating on his wife had anything to do with the movie. Well, I don't it know was if he, she was cheating on I think she assumed he was dead at that point. They didn't really give you a time okay, frame. Okay, fair. And I he think was she cheating does, on his I wife. I think she does say something about that. It was just so stupid. It had nothing to do with anything. And, like, it was just a sci-fi movie trying to make this point of, like, oh, you can still love someone and physically We're just animals. cheat on them. And it was, like, this has nothing to do with the movie. Can we move on from this? You just wanted to get a back shot of Natalie Portman's incredible back, back muscles. But let's move on. You know, when I think of Natalie Portman, that's what me we we oh, always talk about bit, her. That bitch has great back muscles. Dead air. <laughs> I'm just taking in that bitch has great back back. If you mu- think about it, a lot of muscles. movies she's been in, the sex scenes are from the back because she has fantastic. Back I'm a big muscles. Natalie Portman fan. I which uh, by the way, I'm not allowed to be because she's not pretty enough. I no 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 no. no. Yeah, this okay, I don't so understand. I love Natalie Portman. I'm just salty because I've never met a man who doesn't love Natalie Portman but I have met men who don't love me yeah it's called anyone <laughs> oh go fuck yourself um I really like Natalie Portman I think she's a great actress no she's phenomenal I love her it's she not, it's not that confused, I dislike though. her I will fully own it I will go to my grave being immensely jealous of Natalie Portman she is insanely good looking she is such a good actress but i feel the same way about her that i feel about the girls in the band Haim. <laughs> guys are like oh she's so hot but if it wasn't for like the fame and all that i'm pretty sure if she was walking down the street they wouldn't like do a double take and that's just like more of a hatred so, thing on men and not natalie portman so this is Haim. what take- i am a terrible feminist. this is what you need to take out of this Guys should only judge women by their looks, not their accomplishments no, and ability. No, they, can judge, okay, they can judge women by everything as long as I'm better than them. You're not better than them. I am worse than everyone. <laughs> okay. We have to edit this part out. We're not gonna, what are we going to edit this out for? Because I'm going to get fired. Be- why are you going to get fired? Because I'm saying that you should judge women on their looks as long as they're not better looking than me. That's like not a good look. That's... <laughs> For All you, right. it's... Anyway. Okay, so, um, final thoughts. I really like the movie. Um, I wouldn't put it in that top tier of movies that Dan has recommended, where I put The Wrestler, um, uh, the movie last week, uh, Frailty. Uh, but I think I put it in that next tier. I really enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a pretty good movie. Surprising, unique take. I think if you're a fan of science fiction, it's one that you're really going to like. Uh, it's definitely imperfect. There's a lot of scenes. The pace is a little uneasy, easy, especially beginning. Um, I'd give it like probably three, three out of five. That'd be my rating. Um, I'd probably give it, I don't know. Numbers are hard for me. Um, I usually give. Because I'm a woman. I usually, um, 
if I had to give it, so I grade movies basically like this. There's my A movies, my B movies, my C movies, my D movies, and my F movies. You also could have just said an A to F scale. Go. Which fuck almost yourself. no one uses but you. Okay, you want to know what scale you go on? The fuck you scale. Um, Can you break down the fuck you scale? Who's number one on the fuck you scale? You. So anyway, does that mean I'm the best or the worst? You're the worst, oh, okay. always. Thanks for clarifying. Um... This was like a C minus for me. I wanted it so bad. When it first started out, I was like, this is a great movie. I love it. My issue with it was that the first, if I were to break it down into quarters, the first quarter of the movie I really liked. The second quarter I thought was disgustingly over explained to us. I mean, she literally pulls out a USB drive at one point and says that it's like a memory stick. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I haven't been in a coma for 20 years, but thank you for letting me know. And that's also the part of the movie where she's like, I'm a lesbian. I'm going to hit on you. Like the second quarter of the movie was just so over explained. It was almost like a different director. Had that I, I, I movie. agree entirely with that. It was very strange. Um, and then the third quarter of the movie I started getting back into it. There was some suspense. And then the fourth quarter of the movie, visually stunning, but like. What was going on? Fuck yourself. I'm so over this, like, we're going to put all these crazy visuals and you won't know what the fuck is going on. You're going to go on Reddit and try to figure it out, but we're never going to tell you. Well, thank God. It's like not my thing anymore. I know. You never like movies like Twin. uh, Oh, that's all I like. I'm just saying. But. This movie did, but true detective. Okay, but let me tell you, what did Westworld and Twin Peaks and True Detective have, in my opinion, that Annihilation did not have? Strong Character- male leads. No, <laughs> I hate you so much. No character development, and you want to know what happened? Oh, I'm not even gonna go there. Anyway, <laughs> character development. That's what it lacked. Okay. I like character development. I like to be emotionally invested in my characters. I also am very emotionally invested in the orphan puppy commercial that's happening on the TV right Wait, now. Wait, what? That guy's... So- I hate that shit. It's actually, like, really fucked up. Don't give your money to What? Sh- they're not off? rescue dogs. It just... It says rescue dogs. They're not actually rescue dogs. Also, that guy's... So- if you Google it... I mean, okay. That so guy's let me creep. Let me tell you this. They might have changed... But there was a big controversy about two years ago where they were basically like peddling off these dogs as rescue dogs and they weren't. And they were also very unfairly and disgustingly treating their animals. Um, I know they went through a big thing and they rebranded, but they were shut down for a while. All I'm saying is look where you're getting your puppies from. Rescue a dog. Dogs are better than people. You should probably edit that out so that like you don't get sued. I think we're. Uh no, I think you shut it out. Okay. The opinion- redo. All the- I want to say is there was, Shit. there was a commercial on the television with a local place in New Jersey that has dogs and they claim to be a rescue. The opinion. Okay. okay. Ralph hates dogs. We don't. I'm marrying one. That was so. I gotta mean. give you that one. That was pretty good. You fucking asshole. Um. Do you know how weird it is that we're sitting in our fucking living room with headphones on talking into a microphone? I know. We do. Oh, it's our favorite show. It's that lady. Listen, to all of our New Jersey... The name of the thing. God damn it. Okay. To anyone out there who watches local news, there is one particular local news station. Okay, let's just move on. Um, final <laughs> thoughts. Um, <laughs> Annihilation... I liked it. I thought it was good. Not great. I thought it was good. Corny, I think, would give it a below average. Slightly below average. It sucks. I really wanted to like it, and I liked it for a while, and then I hated it for a little bit, and then I liked it again, and then I hated it again. Overall, I never want to see it again. I don't regret watching it. I'm glad I watched it. That's my final take. That's my final truth. Okay, so... um. This has been the first of the uh, Danless uh, recordings. Wait, Hopefully. can we give our reviews of Dan real quick? Okay, you go first. No, you go first. Okay, Dan, hygiene, one out of ten. 
he really looks like he has a uh, a crust over him. He has his beer. There's usually food in it. It's usually congealed. Um, Are you talking about yourself? No, we're talking about Dan. It sounds like you. That's a good one. I don't have a beard. Yes, you do. I'm looking at it right now, you scruff. fucking moron. This is scruff. Okay, fine. There's still food in it. <sighs> okay, anyway. <laughs> I think that this is just completely unraveling. Um... This is the first of the uh, the Danley shows. Wait, I what? didn't give my damn review. Oh my God. What are you going to say? What are you going to Okay, bring are you ready for my damn review? Let's take this unique hot take. Hot take. Dan is actually a really fucking okay, nice guy. Okay, this has been. And he's one of my favorite friends. However, I do think that he is way over his head with the landlord. I think the landlord is way out of his league. This and, is just getting mean and uncomfortable. And but personal. I still love Dan. I love Dan. I'm just saying. I don't think people. He's out of his okay. league with dating the landlord. People, That's it. People don't. They they. Do you know what kayfabe is? No. Kayfabe I'm is. I'm an adult. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's a wrestling term that. Oh, yeah. I'm an adult. You keep the. I don't really watch wrestling. You keep the show going. So you never break character. You, even though everyone knows that I've it's been fake. myself this whole time. <sighs> My God. That's the point. We, our character is that we hate Dan because, one, it's true. And no, we, you hate Dan. I love Dan. Oh my God. Okay. This, I love Dan. I just think that the landlord could do better. Okay, this is just rambling now. All right, bye. Okay, anyway, um, this has been a You Watch I wi- Listened. Uh, yeah, no, I listen. <laughs> you Watch I Listen <laughs> bonus. Uh, this has been horrible. I really regret doing this. Uh, Just like I Dan, regret saying yes when you asked me to marry you. Dan and I will be. That's good. That's a good, clever, unique joke. It is. Dan and I will be. Who has hunts at the restaurant? Oh, this is just rambling. You're not talking about anything. Wait, wait. Oh, you can't mention that it's so, news. No. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye bye. All right, no, seriously though, um, I do want to give it up. Our usual, um, you know, friends of the show, Blood Rain Lit Mag. They have something where you pay ten dollars, you get four magazines. Dan usually does a plug, so I really. He's don't looking know what at me doing. like I know. I'm hoping that you pull some up. I know also, nothing. Also, um, Lobo Sound, download the Bobo EP. Courtney, this so, is landlord. Bobo live from Lobos. So, um, I've made the landlord listen to it. She's not- I'm not the landlord. <laughs> I'm the fiance. Fiance. You're the fiance. Oh my god, <laughs> landlord! I told you he's really in love with you. <laughs> oh my so god! She- I think we have to swap. Oh god! Ew, you- god, you- gross! No, thank you. Oh my god! It, uh... Anyway, um, the, the fiance listened <laughs> to the um, the Bobo EP, not really knowing much about Bobo other than what she's heard from me. Um, excuse me. Um- I have I had FaceTimed with Bobo before I listened to his EP. Bobo and I are basically best friends. Don't come at me. No, if, no, I don't want to. You know what this is? I don't want to pretend to have clout. No this, disrespect to Bobo. I FaceTimed with him once for three minutes. I'm not going to. This is hop. really what this has been. Ralph says something. No. That's our whole relationship. I know it's horrible. Like, I, I'm trying to build me. momentum for these plugs. All right, go and ahead. just stop build me every three the, seconds. Oh, my God. Build the plugs. Do uh, the bit. Do the bit. Um, that is an O&A joke, though. Um, That's buy, why you're marrying me. Buy the Bobo EP from Lobo Sound. They're great guys. They're friends of the show. Bobo is a friend of uh, Dan and I personally. Uh, big time. Uh, I think he's a Yankee fan, right? No. Um, Bobo's a Mets fan. Don't disrespect Bobo. Do we have to talk about kayfabe again? No, you're disrespecting Bobo. I'm the hole. You you really are. You are acting like the hole. <laughs> I like being the hole. All right, guys. So we do have some um, stuff for you uh, being posted. We have the Kalucci Comes Alive audio, which is going to be great. You have the yeah, Annihilation same. review with the, um, with the fiance. We have a shit the shit show, but I think we'll save it for another time. I think we don't want to give out too much content uh, of this glorious prime quality. He keeps looking at me like I'm Dan, and he's never looked at me with more loving eyes before. All right, final words. You want to do a hot take? Have you? Have, you've never done a hot take yet. Ooh, I love a good hot take. Okay, good. give me your hot take. Um, hot take. 
I don't want the Trump baby blimp in New Jersey because I feel like it's going to cause a lot of traffic and everyone in this state already sucks at driving. And like, I don't want to deal with that because it's going to be a lot of like, oh, what the people in this state slow down to see someone pulled over for a speeding ticket. I can't imagine what's going to happen when this float comes. I, I Listen, usually I am very for peaceful protest. I don't want that blimp coming here because I don't want to be driving into my job and I got to fucking sit in traffic for 15 minutes and chain smoke two cigarettes because people can't fucking drive and look at a blimp at the same time. And think, that's my hot take. I don't think you chain smoke two cigarettes. I think you chain smoke like a chain. In 15 minutes when you smoke American spirits, that's chain smoking. <laughs> Them shits burn for 10 minutes a piece. Them shits burn? Do you see how he t- he asks me to do a hot take and then he judges me? This is my life. I am in an abusive relationship. Please help. Okay, uh, my hot take. I think roast beef is an awful sandwich topping. I love beef. I had roast beef sandwich yesterday, you judgmental asshole. You had a steak sandwich. That's different. Roast beef and steak are It different. used to be the roast beef sandwich at Panera and the, oh, at the sandwich place. You could say Panera. Oh, okay. So Panera used to have this fucking roast beef sandwich and then they got rid of it and then they brought it back but renamed it a steak and arugula sandwich and it's literally the same goddamn thing. It's roast beef. Okay, you know what? I think uh, I think you got enough of the hot take. All right, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.